Because it's not ejecting fluid like it should. It's barely creeping out of there. Please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Now as we start on the front brake system and the rebuild of that, the next piece of the puzzle is our original bolts. So as you can see, they're very corroded and internally there's a lot of debris in there. So we're going to have to find a bottle brush, we're going to have to soak them, we're going to have to try and get these as clean as possible. So exterior threads, not a problem, that's what a wire brush is for. This one still has all that debris inside, but the actual holes where the fluid's going to move are clear. But then, sad, 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 completely blocked, hard attack special. And inside, even worse. So, our master bolt, and this bolt goes between the lines into the caliper. This one won't flew any will not flow fluid at all. So we've got a ton of work to do on this one. So we'll see what we can do in cleaning them up with our homemade wire wheel assembly and drill to at least get the external pieces cleaned out. But then we've really got to go to town and get inside these bolts and clean them off properly so that we do not impair flow and therefore have reduced brake pressure and therefore longer braking. We do not want to find ourselves in an accident situation because we were not thorough cleaning our bolts. Oh, that's a hole that's plugged. Yeah. Hot attack special right there. Now that everything's cleaned up with the wire wheel and looking quite nice and spotless. Next piece, drill bit. Find the right size because of our heart attack and atherosclerosis issue. We've got to clean those lines out so we can get the brake fluid to flow. Then another drill bit for this size to get in there so we can take out all of that debris inside it and once we're done then it's going to be blown out with compressed air and make sure any of the debris in there that's left is removed. Even if I have to use and go ahead and get one of those out and scrape it with a dental tool. So we cannot afford to have any debris break loose and go in into the calipers for any reason. So at this point, this is just real patient, careful cleaning. And when we're done, they'll be spotless on the inside just as much as they will be on the outside. Using some highly unusual parts cleaner that we found in a bucket that probably shouldn't be in the state of California. Look at those bolts. Oh yeah, and even better, look inside. All that crusty atherosclerosis is gone. So thankfully we got really lucky with some parts cleaner. So all the bolts are now absolutely perfect. So, replacement master cylinder because the old one was dead. Now let's try and fit this and see what issues we're going to face. When we put the master cylinder in place, we've got limited movement here because of the throttle cables. It's got to go all the wet, all the way against the stop because of our electrical wiring here for the brake switch and the kill switch. And we can't hurt that at all. The other part of the puzzle that's really annoying is if Dave comes around the front of the bike, we have no adjustability for angle. So that's a, we can't have metal on metal, so that's the angle we're going to stuck with for the brake lever. It may or may not work, but in terms of adjustability up and down, we don't want to go up. We actually want to go down, so let's remove this. Because we can't clock the line. The line is secured by two metal castings. So now, being ingenious, you want to go, oh, well, that's easy. I'll take it out of that and I'll put it in here, but you can't. When that goes in there, and trust me, we tried it, the brake line stops the brake working. You get literally that much motion on the brake lever. 
So we're left with a couple things here. One, cut that leading edge off because it's just a support tang. Turn it over. There's no hydraulic fluid behind this. If we cut just this front edge off, then we can bring this around and we can go slightly deeper. So there's a video called clocking brake lines and we always want them at 12 o'clock if at all possible. But the OEM casting doesn't allow that. So if we trim this off here, now I can pull this away from the fork. Now I can move our Nissan caliper down slightly and get a better angle. But we're still severely limited because we can only get so much clearance here. So would that be enough if we squish it all the way down? Yes, it would. But what we can't do is hurt the cables. So taking the restrictor off on the front will give us exactly what we're looking for and we don't need to do any more than that. Sorry. Once this is fastened into place, just snug, then we'll look at the swing angle. We can get what we need. That's enough. That's a lot more free play. So again, let's go over to the bike and dummy fit it. And now we're nowhere near where we were. We're not even remotely close to the fork. So that's going to work just fine. Heresy? I don't know. But comfort? Yes, please. I'll take comfort all day long. So I'm making a small modification that gives us what we need. Why not? So that's our original starting position because that banjo is against the tab. Now we can come all the way out to here. That's our maximum, which is fine because that gives us clearance here between the bleed nipple and the cables to actually go, if we want, a little further down. So we've got some movement there that we can use. The next question is, if we put our brake line where it is supposed to be, that's our stock fitting. If we bolt that in place here, it does not impair our position and change in clocking of our brake line. All right, let's check it. That's tight. That is in position correctly. We are free and clear of the fork up top. We have plenty of wiggle room here if we need it for any future tuning because we can take up this slack here. Handlebar is tight. Clamp is tight. So now all we've got left to do is put our reservoir into place. So let's get rid of the broken piece. Dry fit the reservoir. And then we've got to take a look at where this needs to go. So that will be the location. That's quite a bit of stress on that brake line. 
and I might be worth in time replacing that to make it a little bit longer so it's not so stressed but for now just for the purpose of fitment we'll go ahead and put it in That's that. That's tight enough. Now, we also have, looks like a second hole under here, which can bring that reservoir down. And remember, trash or treasure doesn't get the best parts on the planet. If we take that out, and have a look at what we've got. We have a drill hole for a well nut and another drill hole below it, but that drill hole is way too small to receive this well nut. So our option might be remove the well nut. Let's take our bolt out so we don't lose it. Put it in the gas cap. If we remove our well nut, you can see the size of the hole and Oh, well, that's interesting. If that's the size of the hole, then that's a smaller locating dowel. What do we have here? A smaller locating dowel. But because this is the wrong reservoir, because that should go that way, right? <laughs> if, all <be laughs> if all things line up, that should be how this fits that bracket, then that's not going to work. Hence, that well nut being in here, to go ahead and do that. So if we let this just rest by itself, it's nowhere near the bracket. So then we've got to bend it and pull it to make it fit. That gives us the downward angle, which is great here from the bottom, but it puts a lot of stress on this. So the next piece is our L angle here moves, or should free move, and this one does not in the used master but that should rotate and it does not. Normally on the stock, these move very easily and repositioning that over there will cure this problem instantly. So for now, we'll use it, we'll get it going and if this frees up and starts to move, then we simply reposition the, at the elbow over this way and this will work perfectly. So now we know what we've got, we can go ahead, reassemble it and then go to the bottom end and start putting the calipers on. So let's go ahead and figure out our Tetris game here up front. We've done a dry fit with the calipers, so they're in place, no brake pads, again, trying to make things easy. Now, we know where everything goes, we know what the bolts are, so what we've got to do now is figure out, where does this go? Because that is not in the middle. That sits in the middle of the fender and that and your OEM fender goes through it. So it's setting the distance. So the next thing to look at is the angles. That makes zero sense at all because then the brake line would have to be like that. So that is the way it's gonna go. Now because we have a crossover line, we have a little bit of a jigsaw on this side. So let's feed that through. If the crossover line is behind, that and that makes sense. So. Banjo bolt, washer, crossover line, washer, main line, whoops, washer, caliper. Line up the bolt. There's the thread. Okay, good. A little bit of patience. We'll set these both against the stop there. Again, just finger tight. 
So banjo washer's already in, through the line, second washer. Go ahead, set that in. This one will be a lot easier to start. Now the other thing you'll notice is, if that's placed here, it stays away from the radiator and won't rub. So the purpose of that is to, to secure the brake line under braking. So as the fork comes up and bottoms out this way, this does not drag against the radiator and put a hole in it. So at this point, all we've got to do now is go ahead and fit the brake pads. Our spring clip is in place, so that's ready to go. So no issues there at all. Next, pads. Let's go ahead, set those in together. I'm wearing gloves because you don't want any skin oil on the pad material itself. Put those in. And slide both in, there's one and two, so they're, they're in play at this point now. What we can't have is one on one side and one on the other. So the easy thing to do is tip it upright, get it to that point, and then with them separated, keep your finger in the middle to keep the pads apart. Then cleaned pins in excellent shape, no gouges, grooves, or anything else. Go ahead, insert in, and then you need to push up on the pad so you can see the pin go through. And what we don't want is the pad walking across like that. So that one's in, push up on both, and then that goes ahead and puts the threads against the stop. So we're not gonna screw it all the way in, we're gonna start it so that this side of the pad is secured. Now you can see on the back side they're crooked. So we've got to go ahead, move them apart again, get that one back across, there we go. Now, finger on the bottom, right? So you can push the pads up, hold in place, keep them apart. That one moved again. Come on, get back. Okay. Pin, push up. So we can get the pad located. See how it's pushing it? So a little higher perhaps. Where's the pin? Now the pin's in the right place. There, that's the first one through. But in getting it through, our pads are crooked again. So let's try and straighten that out. There we go. Push again. There it's seated. Start the process. That is finger tight. Finger tight. Make sure the pads are correct again. Insert onto the caliper. And then bolt in. Now remember, Use the video, watch the video on mounting a front wheel because this is a very imperfect fit. There's lots of wobble in it. So setting the brake caliper by holding the pads against the rotor is critical to keep the caliper aligned to the rotor. So all we're gonna do for now is run these in to finger tight and back a quarter turn. Please go ahead, look at that video. We still have to torque and set our brake pins correctly. So, while you're still here doing the job, make sure that you set them and tighten them. And if you use a torque wrench and are adamant about a torque wrench, go ahead, set it correctly. <sighs> Dirty time. We're gonna start off bleeding from here, but once we put oil in, 
We've got to squeeze our little rubber tube here to get some bubbles out first. Oil, what am I talking about? Brake fluid, yikes. Definitely need more coffee this morning. Okay, so a little self bleed. Bleep. Get as much of that air out of there as possible. There we go. That's about it. Okay, so at this juncture, you have two choices. Old school or non-mechanical, super fast, lazy way. And suck, 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 vacuum pressure goes through. But if you forget to fill that up, you put air all the way back in the system, you've got to start all the way over again. So if you're going to use the speed bleed, go for it. It's much quicker, much easier. I'm going old school because not everybody has a speed bleeder, but everybody can grab a bottle, put a hose in it, and bleed. So at this point, first thing is to try and get some air bubbles out here. Let me get that eight in. There it is. Loose back. And this is all about patience. So nothing so far. It's a big spit. Spit? It's all right throwing air bubbles, but we still got to get some pressure. There it goes. Now we're getting somewhere. The other thing you've got to be careful of is that that is seated and you're not sucking air in yourself past and up. Stop that there, and we're going to move to that leg. Go around the other side. That's coming off. Put this bottle somewhere else.
we have very fine bubbles now. There's only a few big ones coming. Time to go back to the top and start up top again. Yep, just very fine bubbles. Again, be careful with the mass. Plenty left. Okay. So with all this pumping, and we're not getting any pressure yet, but we're getting some air out. Notice that the level up here isn't dropping very much at all. And usually if you're moving a lot of brake fluid, that level drops pretty quickly and it's not. So now I'm beginning to worry, worry that the master cylinder is toast because we're pumping fluid, we're getting air, but we're not building pressure and we're not consuming a ton of fluid as we do it. So we will persist. In the hope and reverie that we will get pressure. And not much coming out of the master now. There's a couple bubbles here and there. And still the level's not dropping very much. Switch. So if we go around again and we still get no pressure at all, my money's on the master's no good. Because it's not ejecting fluid like it should barely creeping out of there. So I don't think there's any pressure up in the master cylinder. I don't think the cup is pushing the fluid. I think we're just fortunate to be getting hydraulic pressure at all for the air. So yeah, I'm thinking now we're just, we're wasting time and this master's dead. just doing nothing. All right, go find another master. The next piece of the puzzle was to check the VIN number, see if the factory recall has been done because everybody has been screaming for the last two minutes, have you checked that yet? So it turns out it hasn't. So we're gonna take it to the local Suzuki dealer. We got a brand new master cylinder for free. And then we're getting oh so close to riding the bike. New master cylinder, as the bike, according to Suzuki records, had never had the master cylinder replaced, and brand new brake lines, brand new crush washers, I mean the whole nine yards, down to the caliper and over the top to the other caliper. So we've got a complete and brand new braking system from master all the way down, and of course, the bike has to be returned with the brakes working. So based on that, let's have a look at the brake throw. So we got a reasonable amount there. 
Let's have a look. That's to the end. So pressure starts right at two inches or six centimeters. And that's with factory te trained technicians putting a brand new system on new fluid, everything. Out of curiosity, let's go compare with our brand new FE, F3800 that we've been using as part of the demo workup on that bike. So let's do a little comparison. So let's line our tape measure up and one and a half. Yeah, about one and a half to the middle of the ball. And that's with a brand new bike. So now let's go compare our venerable R6 that's done so much great duty for us over the years. And let's put it in the middle. There you go. That is half an inch. So, hmm, 15, 18 millimeters, maybe 15. So, 